So now that we have a scene up and running and we have our little cube in it that can fall to the ground because it has physics, now we actually get to start programming. And in Unreal, there are a few different ways we can do that. The first thing would be C++ and the second is Blueprint. And we're gonna be covering Blueprint. The way Blueprint works in Unreal is it's basically a visual scripting version of C++. So every time we create a script, we're going to be creating a Blueprint in its place. I'm super excited for this one because this one actually allows us to get started throwing our character around and making it do stuff by programming. It's really exciting, especially if this is the first time you've ever done that. It'll be really cool to see your programming actually influencing the scene and the character itself. So the first thing we need to do is show the different ways that we can create a blueprint. Well, the most common is if you come down here to the content browser, you can right click and create a blueprint class. And it'll bring up this little menu here to pick a parent class and create a blueprint out of it. You can also do this by right clicking in the content browser, coming to the blueprints tab and selecting blueprint class, or you can select one of these other types of blueprints down here as well. You can also come up top to blueprints and create new empty blueprint class, and it'll bring up the exact same thing. As you can see, we've got some common classes here, and then we have this little drop down for all classes. This is where we start getting Getting involved with object-oriented programming. First thing I want to explain here is how Unreal visualizes blueprinting and programming as a whole. We're going to pretend that our game here is actually an interactive movie where the viewer gets to influence the script written by the developer. Our player here is going to be an actor in our movie, and that actor is reading a script. The level has a script of its own up here. If you come up here and you open the level blueprint, the level has its own blueprint to influence things going on in the level itself. But then each actor in the scene can have a script if you wanted to. For us, we don't need to turn this floor into a actor that follows a script. This is just a piece of environment. But our player cube here does need a script because we need to be able to tell this what to do. Now, of course, we could just come up into our level blueprint and tell it to always be running, but that can get a little bit sloppy and complicated. So the best way to do this is just to turn this cube into a script itself or into a blueprint in our case. So we can come over here to the right in the details panel where it says blueprint slash add script. And this will convert our cube, which is just a static mesh in the level, into an actual blueprint that has a script. So if we click this button, we can change this name here to BP underscore player, just to keep naming conventions consistent, like we had M underscore player for material. Now we have blueprint or BP underscore player. For me, this menu might look a little bit different than what you're seeing. I'm just gonna create a new subclass because that's all we need to worry about. And the static mesh actor is going to be the parent. I'm not gonna go too much into explaining how this works just yet because it's not really necessary this part is mostly just kind of a follow what I do and replicate it. You'll start to understand things more as time goes on. Hit select here and it'll create it for us and open it up. And as you can see, we're thrown right into this giant new interface here with a lot of other things going on. This, you can kind of see the similarities to the collision editor or the material editor where we have a viewport here. We have components. We have another tab over here, which we'll get into in a second. We have details for components, just like in the level. And we have a construction script function and an event graph. There's a lot of things going on in here, but we're gonna start off very simply. We're not going to worry about anything else here other than the event graph, because this is all we need for what we're doing right now. The first thing I want you to do whenever you create a blueprint is think of what your goals are. First of all, our end goal for this entire game is to have a player that can move around while moving forward to avoid obstacles and get to the end goal. So now, thinking specifically to the player, what does the player have to be able to do to get from point A to point B and B to level? Well, we have to always be moving, first of all, have to always be moving forward. And then the challenge comes in by avoiding obstacles left to right. So we need to have player input for moving left and right. And we need to have an event that's always making us move forward. And then of course, at the end, we have to have something to tell us that we've beat the level. So now let's start tackling our goals one by one. Well, first, how do we get this player to move forward? Let's open up our player blueprint here and it'll bring up this menu if you've closed it and you haven't created anything yet, which is just a simplified version of what we were seeing inside there for the details, you can just click open full blueprint editor and it'll bring us back to where we just were. I'm going to delete all of these events here. We're going to bring one back in a second. In fact, we're going to do that right now. First thing is going to be the event begin play. Whatever we plug into this execution pin here is going to run immediately when this player spawns or when this blueprint actor spawns. So to see this, we're going to just print a string. This is going to display a message on screen and also in the log, which we'll show in a second. We're just going to say hello world. Everybody's favorite first phrase in programming. We can close this and if we play, you can see in the top left it says hello world and then it goes away. And if we go up here to window, developer tools, output log, you can see it says BP player 
said hello world. We don't need that log. We're going to get rid of it there. We can stop playing. And you can mess with this a little bit. You can press this drop down here. You can change the text color. You can change how long it stays on screen. And you can change the text. You can mess with this. We're not going to. We're just going to remove this because we don't need it. Now that we know that that works. So now we're going to take our idea of moving forward and break it down even more. How do we get that to happen? Well, this is a physics actor. So we want to add a force on the X axis, moving us forward constantly. So what we can do is first, just add force. And hey, look, physics add force. We have a function for that. We can create that and it automatically targets this static mesh component because that is the only available option in our components here that has physics. We're actually going to delete that though so we can see a little bit more about how functions work. So this is a function here. It has an execution pin and then it has a bunch of function arguments or input pins. We have the target. What object are we trying to target to add force to? How much force and in what direction are we adding force? Which bone if this object had a bone? So if it were a skeletal mesh instead of a static mesh, it could have bones. If we wanted to add force to our player's arm, we could do that. And whether or not we are adding an external force or we're changing the acceleration of this targeted object. So we're going to bring in our static mesh component here. We're going to connect it up to the target. You can just drag the components in from the left onto the graph. We're going to connect our execution pin here. And since forward is the X axis, as you can see here with the little red arrow, red corresponds to the X axis. We're going to add, let's say, 1 million units of force on the X axis. If we compile that and we hit play, nothing really happens, mainly because that wasn't enough force. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to add another zero here to make it 10 million instead and close this, hit play. And there we go. And it moves us forward. I'm actually going to move this up so we can see it better. There we go. But obviously that's only happening once. That's only happening immediately once this player spawns, but it's never happening again after that. So how do we do this? Well, there are multiple ways to run this event multiple times. For example, we could do N, we can enter, and when we exit, we're going to add force, and we're gonna do this 10 times. And then we could connect this execution pin here to enter, and to make this a little bit cleaner, we can instead just scroll down to the bottom here and add a reroute node, so that way we can see what's happening. If we compile this, play this, and see, it adds force 10 times in a row, but it will only do it 10 times and then it will stop. You can see this if I made this two, there we go. Now it doesn't do it ever again. And of course we could like add a delay and things like that, but we don't want to do this. That's not what we're trying to do. We could also move this down and say, create a custom event and this will be add force, connect the execution pin up here and then set a timer by event that runs on event begin play and loops every, let's say 0.1 second and then delegate this event to add force. So that way, whenever this timer loops every 0.1 second, it's going to run this add force event. We can do that and that will do what we want. It will be adding it every 0.1 second forever until we stop it. Or we could do something even simpler, which is simply just using the event tick function. And on event tick, we're going to add force. Now, what is event tick? Event tick is an event that runs every single frame of the game. And the delta seconds here is how long one frame lasts. So if we just run this here like this, you'll see we fly off like crazy into the distance. And that's because of how much much force we're adding. We're actually going to leave that as is because now we're going to multiply the delta seconds times the force. Because right now, if we had a really slow frame rate, it's not going to be adding nearly enough force. So what we want to do is we want to lessen the amount of force we're adding when the frame rate's high and increase the amount of force when the frame rate is low. That way, this function will run the same way no matter how fast this game is running. So if we were to multiply this times a vector, you can see under math, we have vector and vector times float. And what this is doing is this is multiplying all three of these float values contained in a vector times one float value here. We're keeping it only on the x axis so we can put 10 million units of force here on the x axis. This will be smaller because we have a very fast frame rate right now. So now you can see even that probably isn't enough force. And we can change this to something like 50 million instead. So now it will be flying off into the distance just like it was before. And there we go. We didn't have to worry about anything in the viewport port, construction script, any functions or macros or variables or any crazy component details or anything. We didn't have to do any of that. And now 
Whenever we play, we're always moving forward. Even if I were to set this at the ground, we're moving forward right at the start. Obviously our player isn't sliding around just yet, but we'll get to that in the next video. So congratulations, you just created your first blueprint and your first event and series of functions that allow this player to move in the scene. Even though we're just moving in a straight line right now, it's not smooth and it's kind of bouncing all over the place, we have a character moving around and guess what? You programmed it, you made it happen. So congratulations, you've successfully used blueprints, you may not know everything about it, but that's not necessary right now. We want to get functions working together and we want to have a game to play. So remember, critical thinking is key. Figuring out your goals and breaking them down and splitting them up into pieces is what's going to allow you to understand Blueprint fully. You don't have to know what every single node means. You just have to know what your goal is and start breaking down how you can get to that goal. Thank you for your incredible support with this series so far and thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.